let me introduce myself again. My name is Natalie Minto. I'm leading the developer advocates team here in Red Hat. And uh, some uh, self-publishing before we start. I'm a um, CD Foundation ambassador this year. The CD Foundation is the Continuous Delivery Foundation. It's a Linux Foundation uh, organization which is promoting open source software for uh, CD like Tecton, uh, like Jenkins, and other uh, software like that. Today we, we're going to sh sh uh, show and talk about more about Tecton, Tecton Chain. Um, I'm also a Kubernetes Community Day organizer and uh, uh, Red Hat Certified Engineer, author of those two books. Tomorrow we have uh, some book signing, so if you are interested, we can give uh, some uh, fr uh, free book uh, signed for you. Um, let's start with the why, like everything, right? Let's, why we need security, why we need to put security in, in the first place. Well, generally, when we buy a car, we expect that every part supplied to be genuine. Moreover, where the car you know, are expensive, you know, we expect that those cars are perfect and the, the components are perfect. And we can say the same about software, the part of the software. Maybe we, don't, we are not taking in much in consideration all the components, moreover, the dependencies, and we just discover things when there's a... Uh, in a big event impacting uh, lots of stuff. You remember the Node.js dependency that blocked the whole world basically uh, <laughs> because uh, the, the, there was some, some guy that was retiring this package or the, the infamous log4j uh, vulnerability that affected so many companies, so many applications running in production. So it's important we know also every single component of our application. And I'm not saying this to you just because I'm uh, paranoid about security. By the way, I'm, uh, I'm paranoid about security. But uh, those are the numbers that are speaking. If you look at those numbers, this is a report that's been several reports, like the State of Kubernetes Security Report, uh, the State of Enterprise Open Source, uh, so also pretty recent reports. You see the numbers, 742% average annual increase of software supply chain uh, attack. 20% data breach. This is really important. The data breach, we've seen in the news lots of data breach. Um, those data published on torrent with all our password, and we need to change the password each month because our password is basically in, all the, in, in all the database in the world. Um, and 7-8% uh, of enterprises, businesses uh, have uh, increased and, uh, and uh, took some initiative to increase collaboration between DevOps, security teams, and I, I can say also developers. And this is another important number, 92% of, say that enterprise open source solutions are important. Today, we're going to show why open source is important in this uh, security story. And, uh, and how Red Hat is helping with that. This growing attack surface uh, with the new emerging trade, uh, threat is really uh, worrying. If you think about the technology advance very fast, just think about ChatGPT and what things can be done with ChatGPT automatically to inject some uh, malware or, or try it on some attack. The surface of attack really increased. So how can we just mitigate. We cannot prevent everything. How do we mitigate uh, issue, vulnerabilities, uh, and, uh, and those attacks? Let, let me go into the how we could do that. Three pillars, I think we can define in general, the software supply chain security can be divided in three main pillars. The first one is we should be able to prevent and identify malicious code. As we know, our app, running app in production starts from the source code. So we should be able to control this source code. And if there's something injecting a dependency that we're we not tracking or something bad on the source code, we should be able to prevent this, this attack. The other part, the second pillar, is uh, the safeguard build system early. This is really important as well, because once we move from the code to this other part, this is the part where we run our pipeline. If you want, this is the DevSecOps part. So we want to run those uh, secure pipeline that will build our application, run our tests, integration tests, security check, static code analysis, uh, um, container image scan, antivirus, any possible check to automate security. 
And finally, we're going into the third pillar, which is the continuous monitoring and observation. No, we, we, we're hearing lots more and more uh, observability rather than mon monitoring, right? Observability is really key because you, we can detach um, any uh, attack, any, any change, and react and restart the loop in, uh, if, we, if we think about a DevSecOps pipeline in this case. What, how Red Hat is, is helping with that? Well, Red Hat uh, is helping in general in the open source industry from 30 years of uh, software development in the Linux kernel, uh, in the operating system, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and all the open, open source software that Red Hat uh, contribute to and deliver and build it and ship it as a product. Um, we, Red Hat also has also a strong distribution mechanism. This is, this is from the beginning. So even from the operating system with the famous package system called RPM, uh, this system is uh, really some certain version. There's some uh, open source software like uh, Foreman uh, or Spacewalk that you can use to track all the version of the RPM in your operating system. And uh, this is also evolving during the, the time. It evolved with uh, pipelines, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, we've seen in the keynotes and the other demo that the OpenShift is on a Kubernetes enterprise uh, version that has security in place for the first time as well. And also uh, is, a, a, is, is a providing more solution toward this. So what Red Hat did recently is an announcing at our um, major event called Red Hat Summit, uh, a new series of uh, cloud services so three product that implements the three pillar that we discussed before. So one, uh, if you look, if you look this diagram, uh, the first one talk about how an application is usually uh, built. So you have some base image, you have some uh, uh, language runtime, and then you have the application library. On top, you have your app, your running code. But those are the the the, the fundamental layer where you have to understand the provenance. The and you need to uh, be sure to, uh, to verify the attestation of curated content. That's why you move into those three pillars, which are three products for Red Hat. Red Hat Trusted Content is a product uh, and uh, a series of tools. We'll show in a demo in a moment. Those series of tools help you identify mm, vulnerability in your source code, some kind of static code analysis in the so-called inner loop where developers start coding, right? Then when you move to automation to pipelines, there's this other uh, product uh, called Red Hat Trusted Application Pipeline. I'll show you in a demo how it works. It's a SaaS system that built out of the box DevSecOps pipeline with all the uh, attestation, provenance, uh, SL, uh, uh, SLSA3 uh, level we'll talk about in a moment. And then there's another product called uh, Advanced Cluster Security cloud service at the cloud security for Kubernetes, which is able to observe and assess and do perform vulnerability assessment. All those products that I'm talking about are based on open source software, and they are part of the Red Hat Trusted Software Supply Chain. The main message I want to give you today is secure your open source code and dependency early. So how you can start doing that? Uh, before doing that, I need to show you this uh, table, like in a, in a, it looks like a table from the 80s, right? Uh, an ugly table with uh, long text. Nobody will uh, read it uh, really carefully. But I want to stress on some of the key uh, terminology. One is the SLSA, which is the supply chain level of, for software artic artifact. It's a set of standard, and you can find the definition on the official website. Uh, uh, that you can adopt to improve artifact integrity and build. The other one is this one, SAST, Static Application Security Testing. Another important one I'm sure you already heard about is the CVE. When there's a new vulnerability, there's a public website called uh, uh, mitri.org uh, uh, and other website that publish those CVE. The common vulnerability and exposure. There's a description, there's the root case, there's the exploit explain as some POC of the attack, and then the mitigation, hopefully. Uh, other two important terminology before we move in, move in, the, in the other part of the demos, uh, provenance 
So you're the, re uh, the recording of the origin, the, uh, the history, and who made the change. That's very important. Another one is attestation. So uh, you are making some kind of certificate that some step or some uh, software artifact has been executed or is present. So that, that is the attestation. Uh, there's, of course, uh, the, the SIG store, and there are um, uh, tools in, like uh, the Cosign is an open source tool to uh, do signing for your for software. So those are the main terminology that I, I would like you to uh, have a look. And talking about SLSA, those are the levels. So the first level is really cool, right? It's uh, no security at all. No, there, there's nothing. Uh, so it's like, uh, you know, best effort. Uh, so there's no security, it's best effort, uh, and you cannot do anything. Once you move from level one to three, you start getting some ground on security. So the level one is able to preventing a mistake and automating the build process. The level two is able to preventing tampering after the build. The level three is the one we'll show in the demo, is, is, a, is the one that uh, provides you a platform able to uh, prevent runs uh, from influencing another. So it's more granular. It's full control of security uh, in terms of this definition of level. And here's, uh, I'm sure you heard about it, the shift led, this famous approach where you have to shift led, you shift all the responsibility up to the source. And you, know, you move from the final uh, users, right? Your production app is consumed by the user. And then you move back to you know, the networking, the production, the staging, QA, development, source code, developers coding, and dependencies used by developers, right? Up to the root of the cause of the issue or, or the, um, of the possible uh, um, risk. Very, very simple example, right? You need an HTTP library, uh, a JSON parser, a database access, any application needs some, something, no? Usually you use a dependency. You, if you are a Java developer, it's a POM XML. If you are a Node.js developer, it's a Python JSON. If you are a Python developer, requirement txt. Or in general, if you just need to containerize application and you, are, uh, you, you abstract from the programming language, you just use the container, you just write a Docker file. But the people that write those files are responsible in bringing those dependencies in the, into the project. And this is the uh, analysis, is the Maven dependency tree. It's the tree of dependency of uh, um, Spring Boot application example, Hello World. As you can see, and maybe you have noticed when you do Maven packages, download the whole world, right? And you need to, to, be, to be sure to, to follow everything. But uh, you, sometimes we don't care much about it, but there's a lots of information here. There are lots of dependency downloaded. And what happens if the maintainer of one of these de dependency is not publishing an update? What happens if this dependency is uh, uh, injected with malware? This is something we need to be able to track. Likely, we have open source software that help us. So the open source software um, for our shift letter approach, of course, this is a, an opinionated approach. There are lots of open source software that are able to implement secure software supply chain. But I want to go through this one because the, those are the backbone of the, that product I'm showing you in a while, the Red Dot Trusted Application Pipeline. Like you can also try, try yourself for free in our developer preview. I'll share the link in a moment. So you can start from any source code uh, management system, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, Gitty, I don't know what, what you like. You can use whatever you want. Then the Red Dot opinionated way to implement secure software supply chain, the one we ship out to the box, is using Tekton. Um, Tekton is, an open, is a Kubernetes native uh, open source software for delivering CI CD on Kubernetes. You don't need to install an ex external agent, it's just available out of the box, bringing API into Kubernetes to manage pipeline, task execution. And Tekton Chains is a project that helps you providing attest attestation provenance for each step executed in the pipeline. For each execution step, you can define a manifest that you can sign, and that manifest um, uh, testify that that execution has been executed with those dependencies, with those uh, volume. Talking about uh, 
attestation and provenance. Cosign is another open source software which is able to uh, analyze, verify, sign the famous uh, software bill of materials. In the slide, maybe it was not visible because it was down, but another important terminology to, to consider is the software bill of materials. So your dependencies are defined, how, how much dependency, what are the, your dependencies? This is this bomb. And the, in the flow, we'll see how to use Cosign for that. There's another, op I'm doing the list of all the open source software. There are many, but those are, you know, our opinionated way on how we build the, the secure software supply chain. Another popular one is Claire. Claire is an open source software that scans container images. So if you want, if you have your container images and you want to scan against a, a public list of CVE, uh, Claire is the software that you can use because it has this public uh, re registry repository of CVE and can scan your container. So if your base image is Red Dot or another, I don't know, another uh, base image, uh, that you want to use uh, Ubuntu or other is able to uh, uh, consult the CV, the, the CV list and give you a scan of the container image. Going into the end of this overview of software and finally going into a demo, uh, I want to tell you that the other software involved is Open Policy Agent. Uh, OPA is very popular in Kubernetes uh, for delivering uh, policies and rules in the clusters. And when you need to deploy something, you can use uh, GitOps approach. We've seen uh, in our session before the demos that we've done, we are using a lot of GitOps. It's like a, today is a standard way to deploy application, keeping them uh, in sync securely. Argo CD is a software, an open source software that can do that. Uh, of course, targeting Kubernetes, and in our case, we're, we're uh, delivering it on top of OpenShift. So that was the overall view. And uh, those, uh, Oh, how we implement this in uh, in the flow is uh, in this way. I'm gonna now go into the demo. Let's go into the how do we prevent and identify malicious code. I have an example here, uh, and I want to start from that. So this example uh, is uh, again for those of you that were not aware, were not present in our keynote. We created a sample or GitHub organization where we are, are present as, as user. And in this organization, the Wind Turbine Inc., uh, we have some repository. So this is a simple uh, repository containing a, um, a Spring Boot application. Re really simple, no Docker file, full of uh, vulnerability. That's why we want to use it uh, to, to, to try it out. So what we've done is just have this uh, Spring Boot application, uh, that we can, uh, you know, execute also locally. Uh, and uh, it's really simple. I'll show you the, the source code. It's just uh, printing out an hello endpoint we can query and it's going to replace something. And, and it's also providing some static content. Really simple, but the, 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 the thing I want to show you is the dependency file. So as a developer, I, this is my code, really simple. But look, uh, Look at this. Um, I have the, my dependency file, and in the dependency file, there's something saying to me that I, I'm using this version, but this is a known vulnerability. I should use another version. And there's also the, the infamous log4j here, and we put that version up in, in for purpose, right? Uh, so why Visual Studio Code in this case is suggesting me that? Because uh, Red Hat is providing an open source uh, um, extension that I'll show you in a moment. It's called the Dependency Analytics Report. And if you go to the list and extension and you look for Dependency Analytics, already, it's already installed. You can install in, uh, in Visual Studio Code, in IntelliJ. And this basically is just uh, scanning your dependency in the code and providing you a report that you can use to verify what are the vulnerabilities. As you can see here, we have lots of vulnerability, log4j, struts, uh, h2, those are all version. And you can have also a detail if you wanna, uh, if you wanna open it by clicking. Uh, this is gonna go on, on SNCC website because this uh, extension is made in collaboration between Red Hat and SNCC. So we're able to scan in early in the inner loop if there are any vulnerability. So, uh, we should stop here, right? Because we found some vulnerability. But let me let me go through through the other pillar. How do we automate and how do we automate the, the building part? Because 
A quick fix here, uh, folks, is, uh, is of course going into the POM XML, looking for uh, the suggestion and say recommendation in 2.20 and, and doing that, uh, simple as that. So this is our fix, but I want to keep this error because I want to show you how other tools in the so-called outer loop can help us with that. And the tool I want to show you today is uh, Red Hat Trusted Application Pipeline. Um, Red Hat Trusted Application Pipeline is, uh, is Red Hat SaaS against those software I was talking to you about. Claire, Tecton, Argo CD. It's basically implementing SLS, SLSA level three. Uh, so it's compliant with all of this and it's uh, offered as a SaaS. So the only thing you need to do as a developer, as a user, it's uh, getting a, a repository accessible and uh, you can uh, start from here and you can import this code and you can, uh, uh, then, then this wizard will ask you, okay, I found this is a Spring Boot application and uh, this is the target port. I can deploy to a, this also deploy to an environment which is in this SaaS or can connect to your cluster somewhere. If you have OpenShift on any Kubernetes cluster, you can design the number of instances, injecting variable, build time secrets if you need to do that. And what it's going to do is uh, basically define your first secure pipeline. Now, what it's going to do also is um, pushing to your Git repository some uh, settings to implement those uh, secure pipelines. So this is also called pipeline as a code. It's really interesting. Let me show you how. The system is going to uh, suggests you to add some change. You can, if you're using GitHub, you can install a GitHub app in your uh, organization or repository. Uh, but what the system is doing, it's adding, as you, as you can see here, some Tecton um, object pipeline run with some steps to implement all those security gates. It's fully automated. As user, you, you have, as developer, you have just, you know, to um, to log in into your, um, in, into your GitHub and approve that. I think I'm logged in here. So let me go uh, back here in the par partner catalog. I have a pull request. Here we go. And you have just to merge it. What is happening here is that the system, the, the, um, the tool recognize the merge in, uh, in Git and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, apply the, the pipeline. As you can see, this is applied and uh, now the pipeline is starting. The pipeline has all the security gates I was talking to you about, but since this takes some while, I wanna show you uh, an already run um, execution of that. So it takes some time to clone the repository, to build the container, inspect the image. Let me show you uh, an execution I already done uh, in, another, uh, in another user. So this is the execution I've done. As you can see, the, the pipeline has been started and then after building the container image, has, been, uh, has done some scan with Claire. Claire, if you remember, is that uh, open source software that can scan for a uh, container image. And if you, if you look at it, we have 17 critical uh, security issue and uh, some, 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 uh, some lower score, but we can go in, uh, in much detail and go, and go looking at uh, what are those uh, vulnerability uh, and check uh, uh, what's wrong here, what is, the, what, what is the layer for this vulnerability. So we can go really granular on that, but the, the system already identified some vulnerability. Not only the vulnerability is able also to give you an, uh, an, uh, an overview of uh, what's going on with an uh, antivirus scan. So in this case, it's using Clam AV. It's an open source antivirus that can perform that, that scan and is also able to perform the check on the software bill of, of material and some other check with uh, some, some other tool. So long story short, this will perform all the scan. Now, at this point, you can also do this operation. You can visualize the, the software bill of material. So this will tell you all the dependencies in all the version that you have. And you can decide to verify with cosign and also uh, sign it if you want. So it's a convenient way to have an, a, an overall view of everything that you need. 
to run a DevSecOps pipeline. And not only that, if you imagine right now, this software, you know, it contains lots of vulnerability, but uh, after, the, uh, after the scan is able also to perform uh, another, another type of uh, uh, execution, which is the uh, integration test. Uh, those are called in the terminology, uh, the enterprise contract. So uh, the partner Calago enterprise contract is able to show you uh, that for each, uh, after the pipeline execution, the system give you a security tab. In this security tab, you see all the layer or check that has been done for the application. So is there a, a, a base image? Is there a build task containing the steps? Uh, what are the collection? What is the provenance that match the build task image results? So this is not really, uh, it's all success because it's not about the security, it's about the conformity on all the check that you need to do before pushing that somewhere. And for this reason, I also want to show that the system is able you to deploy this to uh, the, um, a default location in the SaaS or your own cluster. And uh, for this reason, I deployed this application in this cluster. This is an OpenShift cluster uh, that I connect to the, to the system. And here's the, uh, we have the partner catalog. So the tab was able to deploy the partner catalog. You can see the Spring Boot app running over here. And here's our hello endpoint uh, without the HTTPS, right? So, this is absolutely a non-secure application, non-HTTPS, no, with full of vulnerability. But just to show you that this system is able to, uh, the tooling are able to help you on the inner loop on the code side, on the pipeline, so you can stop everything. You can stop signing, stop delivering it if you want. Or uh, last but not least, also on the observability. How you can observe all this? Well, there's another tool called the um, Advanced Cluster Security for Kubernetes that you can attack in the attach into into the execution. Um, and I'll show you here. I'm, I've um, I've installed also in this cluster, and I, I want to access it because I want to show you that you can do the observability also using this other tool, which is connected to the cloud service. And here's an overview on the whole cluster where you are connected. I'm connecting this cluster and the cluster recognizes that there's log4j vulnerability uh, is a violation of your policy. And also uh, you have a, a list of the container images containing all the, uh, the those uh, vulnerability. There's a list of all the container image, but you can have a, a list of uh, uh, top CV, uh, CVE, or uh, you can order by the last scan. As you can see, there are lots of stuff that are not going very good over here. And it's really cool also the, the, the thing in manage the vulnerability management. So you have a list of CVE in the cluster, uh, also the risk uh, policies, the partner catalog, catalog is having a, a high risk in the indicator. Uh, this is a, give you a very granular detail on how you can um, a filter and uh, organize uh, the policy and uh, discover the policy violation that you have in the cluster. I want just to close, uh, the, just showing that this observability tool can also be very granular and going not only in the execution of the pipeline, but also in the execution of the application. And uh, here's a diagram that show you uh, all the application running. And if you click on one of this uh, uh, entity over here, you can have the list of uh, all the flows, all the network flows, which port, which protocol, uh, who is contacting what. This is the internal port. This is the traffic. And you can uh, inject network policy at runtime if you want. So to recap everything, security in place from the beginning in the code, in the pipeline, and also in the, in the target uh, Kubernetes cluster. How you can do that, uh, you can uh, try Red Hat tools, Red Hat product for that. And I'll give you some links here uh, where you can try for free what I've uh, just shown you. If you go to this website, redht slash trusted, you can, uh, sub you can uh, subscribe and uh, uh, send a request and you can try this tooling uh, for free. Uh, again, this tool is fully 
composed by open source software. We are just delivering as a service, but the backbone is open source. You want to do the same thing in your own cluster? Just take Tecton, Tecton Chain, Cosine, Claire, uh, Argo CD, put that all together in, in some pipeline scheme and implement your secure software supply chain in the same way we have done. If you want it out of the box, here's the service that you can use. Um, this is a, another reminder of things that you can do. If you just subscribe to developer.com, you have some free ebooks, tutorial. And what about the ebooks? You are interested on uh, developer setting supply chain security in DevSecOps? You can download for free this book. Uh, this will walk you through on how to set up a DevSecOps uh, flow. Uh, I know we are out of time. Just a, just a quick reminder that. If you want, we do some book signing tomorrow. Uh, this is the Modernizing Enterprise Java. If you are a Java developer, yeah, probably you love it. Uh, and this is a, a book more for people interested on uh, Tecton, uh, Argo CD, so you know, Pipeline and GitOps. Uh, it's a list of recip of, uh, of those technologies that you can use to start implementing your GitOps-driven uh, secure software supply chain. Thank you. That was a pleasure to be here with you, all of you today. And uh, I really look forward to speak with you uh, here at the booth about uh, this product and open source, Red Dot open source technology. Thank you.